Welcome back to Ryanology. I'm your host, Ryan Aruda. On this show, I have our newest member of the staff at Ryanology, Ethan Lima, and he introduced himself as our new editor. As well as Ethan Lima, I have him and two other band students, Ashton Perry and Frank Crowell, promoting and talking about their experience at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. As well as the interview with them, I have a interview with Mr. Wilbur Higgins, promoting the Poetry Out Loud event happening the day before our holiday break. Please stay tuned and enjoy. Welcome back. Today on the show, I uh, am very lucky to have our new editor and staff member here at Ryanology, Ethan Lima. Hello, I'm uh, Ethan Lima. I'm a senior at uh, Dartmouth High School and uh, I'm the new editor at Ryanology. And uh, I also take part in the marching band and I'm in the indoor percussion as well. So Ethan, uh, what is your background here at the media program at Dartmouth High? So I've taken uh, intro to TV media production and I uh, really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite classes and I uh, want to continue it with uh, Ryanology. It's really great. And uh, you said you do the marching band in your free time. And you know, recently you guys went to New Jersey. Can you uh, give a little insight on that? So uh, at the Na US Bands Nationals at New Jersey, it was a really great experience. Uh, we performed our show Thorns and Petals, which looked at the uh, pretty much the two parts of a rose, like the thorns and the petals, and like the contrast between those, like the really harsh like uh, part of like the thorns, and then like the beauty of the petals, and how those two come together to form one. And it, it was a really, really fun show to perform, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, the whole experience at Nationals was really great and it was just a really just fun time and I think it was a good end to the four years of my uh, participation in the program. And you know speaking on the band we actually have two other band members here today. We have Ace and Ashton Perry. Welcome first off and um, hearing about Ethan's you know, individual performance and his individual time there. Do you guys want to go through uh, what it was like for you? Oh, uh, yeah. So um, for me, I've been in the marching band since my eighth grade year. So this is my fifth and final year. Um, it's great to be surrounded by all my peers throughout all of that. And uh, I think the finale to the whole season was great. Uh, everyone put in their best effort and it uh, really showed. Yes, I'd have to say that this year was one of the best show years that we've had in my experience in the band and I was really happy with how everything turned out. And coming back from COVID, you know, a year of uncertainty and unknowingness, how would you say that you performed, you know, being back at MetLife? Um, I would say for a lot of people it was their first big championship at MetLife because of, you know, COVID. A lot of the new kids had never seen anything or been in the stadium that big before. Um, I think everybody really pulled their weight, which is uh, you know, it's, it's a really special thing to have a team that can pull their weight even through COVID and all of that stuff. So I'm really proud of just everyone who was in it. And transitioning, you know, from a different band director, different staff members, how would you say that you, that perfected your individual performance? I think it was a really smooth transition. Mr. Flint, uh, picked off pretty much, uh, where, uh, BK left off and, He's really good and uh, designed like a really, really great show this year. And it was just a great start off to his uh, start of a band director. And, you know, going back to the whole thorns and petals concept, how would you say that kind of developed throughout the season? You know, seeing it at the beginning to, you know, seeing it at the end, what kind of changed and what kind of made it better? Um, well, Personally, when I first heard the thing, uh, the, the theme being thorns and petals, I thought it was going to be like a good versus bad kind of thing, which I always thought was kind of cheesy. But the way that they went through with it being the beauty of both sides and not just, you know, the good versus bad, it's that they both have 
like niceness to them and they're combined is what makes the rose beautiful. I, I thought that was really nice and uh, something I hadn't seen before. And, you know, you three being in the brass, you know, having different members in the band that we've never had, violinist, drum set player, would you say, looking at all of that, adding up all those factors, that you are proud of the final product that came out of it? Of course. I think it's re uh, really great how it all turned out in the end. And uh, it was just really cool to see all these different uh, instruments and people who haven't been part of it before taking part of it to form one great product. It was just really amazing in the end. And, you know, for those of you that will continue on to indoor percussion, indoor band, jazz band, how would you say that this experience is going to help you in that? Uh, marching band really just makes you a better musician. You know, you're adding elements to what you're doing while you're playing, and so it can only help you in other aspects of your musical career. And personally, how has being in the band, you know, you're all seniors, so for this large amount of time, pr practically your whole high school career dedicated to the band, how has it affected you, your friendships, and where you've really come through in high school? It had just a great effect. I think most of like my friends have come from the marching band and it's just really great to like form these relationships that I probably wouldn't have had if I wasn't part of the band. And finally, just kind of wrapping it up, indoor percussion. Are we excited to see what's going to happen? You know, how are we feeling on that? Obviously having the contrast between marching band and indoor, but how do you feel moving forward now that we're leaving this whole show behind? I'm really excited for indoor percussion. I think the theme that they have planned and the whole concept of this show is really, really good. And I can't wait for other people to see it and uh, what they're going to do with the music and all of that. Well, I'd like to thank the three of you for coming on the show today, you know, talking about the band, one of the key structures here at the high school. And uh, for all you folks at home, please make sure we're going to have our home shows in February for Indoor Percussion. Swing on by and uh, have fun and enjoy. Now, let's take a look at the interview I had with Mr. Wilbur Higgins looking at Poetry Out Loud. Today on the show, I have Mr. Higgins promoting the English Poetry Out Loud event. Mr. Higgins, how are you doing today? Great, thanks. Good to be here. So, Poetry Out Loud, um, we've done it before in past years at the Dartmouth High School. Could you kind of explain what it is and what you'll be doing? Sure. So, Poetry Out Loud is a nationwide competition for the recitation of poetry. Essentially, students are, are memorizing poems and then in front of a mic, in front of an audience, reciting the poem from memory and trying to perform it just a little bit so that they can kind of indicate that they understand what's happening with the poem and trying to transmit it to the, to the audience. Um, this year, just like almost every other year, last year was kind of an anomaly, I guess, because of COVID. Um, but this year we are hosting a, an event in person um, in the library on Wednesday, December 22nd, which is the day right before vacation. And it will begin at the beginning of PACE and will probably go through period two. Depends on how many participants we actually have um, in the end. The competition uh, works at the classroom level first. So all AP English classes had a classroom competition and then the winners or the top performers in each one of those classes are then invited to go to the school-wide competition on the 22nd. So the school-wide competition on the 22nd, the students that are able to rec um, recite their poems, get through it, and hopefully move on, what is the road ahead for those students? That's a good question. So our winner from our school-wide competition will then be invited to go to the New England Regional, which is usually on Cape Cod every year for us. Um, for the school-wide competition, each participant has to memorize and recite two poems. 
but once they go to that next stage, which is that regional competition, they have to memorize a third poem. Uh, that usually takes place first week in February, so that regional competition. The winner of that competition then gets invited to go to the Massachusetts State Final, which will probably be early March, and that's in Boston. And then each state selects their own winner, and all 50 winners are then invited to go to Washington, D.C., I believe in April, uh, for the nationwide competition. So there will be a nationwide, a national poetry out loud champion. And there is scholarship money involved, I think, as well. Pretty sizable. I can't remember exactly what it is, but the winner of the national competition will win a scholarship prize. And that's pretty amazing that students are able to do these things, especially, you know, after the year of COVID, finding new opportunities and experiences. As your skills as an English teacher, what would you say students are learning and advancing in when performing, um, reciting, or just learning these poems? You know, it's, it's funny because every year we do this, um, you know, the first question that any student asks naturally is, why do I have to memorize a poem? Um, and I think the best response to that is that when you memorize a poem, you dig very, very deeply into the poem itself. You know, learning it line by line, thinking through the combinations of words, the, the logic and the order and the structure of the poem. All of that, I think, becomes much clearer when you're spending so much time reading a poem over and over and over. I think that's probably the biggest benefit um, from, you know, from performing and memorizing a poem. But I think the other part of it is, as well, is trying to modulate your voice and your tone and your rhythm so that you can kind of transmit to somebody else what you think this poem means, because everybody has their own interpretation of a poem. Um, and I think the, the beauty of poetry out loud is that you may have four or five participants do the same poem, but may transmit a significantly different meaning to the audience. Um, depending on who is doing it at the time. So these students that are, you know, versing themselves, maybe learning the same poems, but performing it, they're also advancing in their personal skills, which would you say is helping them inside and would help them later beyond in life? I think so. I mean, I, I don't want to overstate the benefits of, of doing poetry out loud, but yeah, I, I think there is something to be said uh, for having the courage to stand up in front of a group of people uh, and perform something that you've memorized. Um, you know, I think for actors, that's something they do every day. It's a constant for them. They're, they're used to that. I think for the average person, though, uh, having to memorize something, you know, line by line and then performing it in front of people, it can be frightening, uh, terrifying, <laughs> actually. And I think a lot of people have the experience that when you actually get up in front of people, you're, sometimes your mind just kind of blanks out um, as a result. Working through that um, and kind of you know, working your way up to that experience, I, I think is, it can be valuable. You know, the idea of being able to present yourself uh, in, in front of an audience, I, I do think there is probably some positive takeaway from that. So telling students, all those who are invited, please, at least make an attempt to join the Poetry Out Loud event. There is really no negative effect that will come from it, and you'll be learning some great, great things about English language and literature overall. And great. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Higgins, for coming on the show today. And for everyone at home, I would just like to say, please feel free to tune in December 22nd, the day before our holiday break. We will be live streaming from Pace to Around Second Period and you will be able to see all students reciting their poems. And from there, we'll be able to see the winner. So thank you once again, Mr. Higgins. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Ryanology. I'd like to send a big shout out to the three band students that joined me on the show today, as well as Mr. Higgins promoting the Poetry Out Loud event. Please take a look in the description for the link to that. It will be live streamed the day before our winter break. Please have a happy, healthy holiday season.